Hello, my name is Greg Rostami and welcome to a short tutorial on how to create very realistic HDR effects using only single exposure using Topaz Denoise, Topaz In Focus, and Topaz Detail. Now the image that you see on the screen is the resulting image that we're going to work for. So uh, I just wanted to show you uh, what we're going to create. So now that you've seen uh, the end, let's go ahead and close that out and load in the original uh, RAW file that created that image. So here's the RAW file. Now you probably noticed that there was a little yellow indicator that showed over here uh, that appeared in the upper right hand corner that's basically indicating that there's a lot of this image that's currently being underexposed. So in the histogram, in fact, there's a little warning here in the upper right hand corner that says that, yes, there's definitely too many areas of this image that are underexposed. Now believe it or not, that is by design uh, because when the photo was taken, I made sure that there was absolutely nothing that would touch the right side of the histogram when I actually took the picture in the camera. So immediately when I took the photograph, I looked at the histogram and I just made sure that nothing was going to be clipping on the whites. So essentially we are exposing for the brights, which means that we're never going to blow out anything that's going to be white or really bright in the photo. Also, if you were to look at the settings for the camera, the ISO is at 50, uh, 250th of a second, and the F is at 4. Now, by default, uh, Adobe Camera Raw will actually have several different settings that um, will not be zero when you try to load raw files. Uh, what we highly recommend is that you take any sharpening and any noise reduction and turn that off in the Adobe Camera Raw. Uh, in fact, I've already done that from before. I've turned off all of those uh, presets and I've created a preset called Zero, which basically does all of that for me. Uh, the next thing you want to do is that if you click here all the way in the middle bottom of the screen, by default, Adobe Camera Raw will want to load your images at 8 bits per channel. You want to change that to 16 bits per channel so that we will have a greater amount of latitude and more dynamic range and more data to play with once we are in Photoshop and inside of the Topaz plugins. So once you set this up, this very simple input, you click open image and your image is going to load up here into Photoshop. All right, so as we zoom in, uh, you can definitely tell that all of the bright parts of the image are filled with detail. There's absolutely no part of this image where the whites are being blown out. But obviously the opposite problem now exists which is the dark parts of the image seem like they don't have enough information. When in reality there's a lot of data that's hidden in the dark areas of the image and by using just the extended amount of data that a raw file will give you as well as Topaz's denoise, we're going to be able to really squeeze all this information out. So the first thing usually that I like to do is I like to size the image down just slightly just to make things go a little bit faster. And if you are going to size an image down, um, don't choose either automatic or bicubic sharper. Uh, I highly recommend that you use just simply bicubic, which is going to produce smooth gradients. And in this case, let's just uh, reduce it by 50% and we click OK. So there's the image reduced down by 50% of its original resolution. So now, uh, the next step is I'm going to make a duplicate of this image just so that we can get back to it uh, a little later on. Now, we want to denoise this photograph. So let's go ahead here into Topaz Denoise. And uh, I had done some settings from before, but let me just go ahead and reset everything and take you step by step through how I denoise this photo. First, you want to concentrate on a part of the photograph that might have some like medium level grays. We watch it at the luminance uh, output here and bring it up just a little bit as far as the noise reduction goes. And I want to bring it up just a tad, so maybe about 0.03. And as we go around the image, uh, we're going to try to see if there's any area that is going to need a little more noise reduction. So let's zoom in slightly. This is what the original noise looks like and definitely Topaz Denoise is doing a great job of finding that noise and removing it. Uh, I'll bring up the recover details a little bit so we can get some more of those details coming back even though at the same time we're removing the noise 
and uh, it seems like everything is going pretty well. And as we look at some of the areas that are in shadow, it looks like it's doing a great job of removing the noise. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and just make a few other tweaks and modifications. Now, if you want to learn exactly how to use Topaz Denoise, I highly recommend that you watch uh, one of the videos that was created by Topaz that teaches you step by step about all of the settings and the sliders of Topaz Denoise. So once we're happy with the way that this denoise has come out, let's go ahead and click OK. And Topaz will denoise the photo. Now remember, this image is at 16 bits per channel, so all of the denoising is going to really bring out a lot of detail in the dark parts of our photograph. All right, so now the denoise is done. Here is, I'm going to make one additional copy. In fact, let's take that original copy that we had. I'm going to delete it because I think this copy is one that we should hang on to and create a duplicate. All right. Now, finally, um, here is the, the magic step that's going to really give us that enhanced or over-the-top HDR effect. Under Adjustment, you want to choose HDR toning, and immediately this wah, crazy HDR effect is going to appear on the screen. Uh, now, as far as the defaults go for this particular setting, uh, let me zoom in and show you that the only problem with this is when you zoom in a little further, you can see sometimes there's some aliasing problems around edges. And to get rid of that, turn on smooth edges here in the HDR toning, and it's going to definitely get rid of any of those slight amount of aliasing problems that you might have. As we toggle back and forth between the original image and the preview output of this uh, HDR toning, we can see that any of the areas that were very, very dark in the original image, like for example this area right here, which we originally thought was black, is actually filled with a lot of great detail. And no matter where we go, even in the very severe dark areas underneath this water fountain, again, what we used to think was complete black, is actually filled with great detail. So uh, I usually will take the saturation in this uh, setting and I'll bring it down just a little bit, like maybe about 12 or 13 or 14, and click OK. All right, so now this is the over-the-top HDR effect and we want to kind of like ease off on this effect. So usually what I do at this point is I will select all and uh, a copy, switch over to the original image, and we're going to do a paste. So now we have both the original image in one layer and we have our over-the-top HDR effect in the other layer. Um, at this point, you are welcome to do one of two things. You can either take the opacity of that layer and bring it down to a certain level that you like. And for me, somewhere around uh, like about 50 to 60 percent is a great job. So as you can see, it's not going to be, you know, so dark and it's not going to be that you know, over the top effect that we had before. So that looks pretty good. Let's uh, stop there as far as the, the blending and we'll flatten the image together. So the, both those layers are now going to get combined together. All right. So now uh, that we've done this, the final step is to be able to take any of the smoothing or blurring that can happen from just any image coming through the lens of a camera and to be able to remove that using both Topaz in focus as well as Topaz detail. So as we zoom in, let's take a look at uh, some of the areas that are blurry here in the photo and uh, we'll pull down to Topaz Labs, Topaz in focus. All right, let's zoom in even further just to the areas that are going to be blurry right about there. And this is a really powerful working point about uh, Topaz in Focus. You want to make sure that you put your viewfinder around the areas that you think have the most amount of blur. And then choose under Blur Type, Unknown or Estimate. I bring up the blur radius just a little bit and click Estimate Blur. And immediately you'll be able to see how Topaz is going to find all the blur in the image and it's going to remove that blur. And if you ever notice that there are any kind of like aliasing artifacts, uh, I always use a little bit of edge softness to try to smooth that out, just so it's not so sharp. It's got a little bit of sharpness to it, you know, but uh, it's definitely sharper than the original, but it's not over the top sharp. So I'll click OK. 
So that's going to be now uh, sharpening our photo quite a bit. And then the last step in our workflow, as far as the sharpening goes, is I'll even choose Topaz Detail. And let's take just the small details in our photo. Okay, let's zoom in closer. There we go. And take a look at the tree here in the background. Let's just take the small details and bring that up just a tad. There we go. All right, so this is what it used to look like. As you can see, it's blurry. And now we are really, really squeezing all that detail out of that photo and click OK. And usually as a final step, what I like to do to this photograph is to bring up the levels control under adjustment, levels. And I'm going to hold down the option key. And as I move the brights, I'll find a place in the photo where my brights like in the sky are being blown out. And this is completely up to you. Now, some people might be comfortable with not blowing out any of the whites, but for me, just a little bit of blowing out the sky actually is okay. So it's gonna, in overall, make our image become brighter. And I'll even take the, the center of the gamma controls and I'll brighten that up just a tiny bit as well. And we finally click okay. All right. So now, as we analyze this final image, here's what we got. As we zoom in, you probably will notice that all of the areas of the image that have whites that are really, really bright still have all this wonderful detail in the whites. And conversely, if we go to the areas of the image that are supposed to be dark, like the shadow areas that we had before, okay, we could see that there's all this wonderful information that's in the darks. And even in this very, very dark area that was underneath the tree before, we still have a lot of great information there. So in general, this is exactly what my eyes saw when I was standing there taking the photo, because obviously the underexposed version wasn't the, uh, what I saw with my eyes, and the over-the-top HDR effect wasn't either, whereas this is more of a correct representation of really what my eyes saw, without it being too much of an exaggerated effect. Thank you very much for watching this single exposure HDR effect using Topaz.